service department at Galley Chevrolet is clean, modern, and ready for you. Our master technicians service every make and model, including certified service on any GM vehicle. Service done right the first time, every time, right here at the all-new Galley Chevrolet. At Gala Chevrolet, our master technicians service every make and model no matter where you purchase your vehicle. But that's not all. We also provide certified service on every GM model. So if your car's been acting a little funny lately or something just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Bring it in to the most modern service facility in the entire state and let us make sure that you're driving a vehicle you and your family can depend on. Service done right the first time, every time, right here at the all-new Gala Chevrolet. Hey, welcome to the Steve Davis Show. Special guest today is Adrian Ortega, head basketball coach at Atrisco Heritage and also the 2018 state champion. How's that sound? That sounds great. That I sounds mean, great, Steve. That, that just rings a bell, man. That's <laughs> something that you worked your whole career for. And, 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 and it's not about, I, I can speak for you, hopefully, that, you know, it's, it's just something that that's uh, that because you work so hard and, and, and your players and you and you built a, mm -hmm. and your assistants coach you brought the whole thing to the the table and it just happened to be this year that it all came together well it's been it's been pretty wonderful and it's been good for our community our school being the first one in any sport so it's pretty exciting Steve. Well, I tell you, and it's, it's, it's something that, you know, I think you just, you just hit a greater point. You know, you're the first head coach of the Trisco Heritage, and you, and you had an unbelievable route to get to Trisco Heritage. I mean, what you've done, you know, any young coach, the one that wants to coach, you know, and you believe in what you are and about your coaching ability and, and your, your love for the sport, you need to talk to Adrian to take it. I mean, I mean, that, that, I, I still, uh, in a way, I'm, I'm, you're my hero to see that you, you, you know, you, you, you took, you know, you went coach saying then, and you, then you took a job down in Las Cruces at Yon Yante, and you drove every, you know, you, <laughs> you stayed down there, and your family stayed here. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite the journey. I mean, anybody that wants to get into high school coaching knows it's not for the money. And uh, you definitely got to put in the work. You know, I've been lucky to have some pretty good mentors. Lucky to have my wife and, and my family support me. And the biggest thing is, you know, at, specifically after Sandy, is just being able to work for some really good people, some good administrators. Without that, uh, you know, you just, you're just, you're not successful. It's, it's an entire team, Steve. So I've been fortunate. Well, hey, let's talk about this season. I, you know, I, I kind of just, I was reminiscing a little bit and, and I, I looked at the first game of the year, <laughs> Volcano Vista, and, and first of all, that game there was like uh, almost like a, a, a championship game, starting right off. Uh, and and what a game of runs! I mean, they went up, you went up. It was it was it was a uh, deal, and, and and you guys came up on the short end, but it, it was just kind of set the stage for the whole season. I mean, because every, every game seemed like you guys had a great mm -hmm. crowd and great intensity for the, the rest of the year. Well, you know, they beat us by six last year in the semifinal game. And uh, that, I, I kept that close to my heart. But um, leading up to that game, I didn't really feel like our team was practicing real hard. You know, we had everybody back from last year's team except one senior. And, you know, looking back, that was actually, you know, we, we ended up losing the last second by, I think it was a bucket. Correct, uh, penetration yeah. and kick, but we were down the entire game, and that was a product of just not practicing hard. So losing that game really woke our team up, I thought, because after that, I mean, our practices were phenomenal. You know, we went on a run, and uh, that was just looking back, and I even told Coach Brown, I said, thanks for beating us, because that was a blessing in disguise. So. Well, I mean, then, then it did, your schedule didn't get any easier. You play, you know, El Dorado, and El Dorado at that time was, you know, wasn't on its run yet, but you, you caught them. But it was, a, it was a, like you said, you had, had a good practices and, and you hit El Dorado and all of a sudden people were looking at you like uh, you're the, the team that's starting to beat. Then you beat La Cueva the next week. And those are two, I mean, the schedule was brutal this year. Like I said, you know, El Dorado, I think, I believe they, they lost to, we were the only team they lost to in the state of New Mexico prior to losing to Cleveland in the semifinal game. They lost to a Texas team uh, in the Hobbs tournament, but they went into the state tournament with two losses. 
So we had, we lost Friday. We had a day to prepare for El Dorado at El Dorado. And I thought our kids was, that's when I really, really noticed our mental toughness was specifically that game because towards the end, end of the game, it was a one possession game throughout. And we were really able to break it open towards the end. And I felt, I felt really, you know, comfortable with my team at that point. Well, I can tell you, Brian O'Neill made a statement, you know, and it was a little bit later, but, you know, you, you go on this, you know, go on this winning streak and, and, and you get a lot of eyeballs watching you and a lot of, you know, media talking about you and, and things. But, you know, I, I think he, his best statement was, was that your team knows, knew how to close a game out. I mean, you better not be behind going into the fourth quarter because you you and your staff and, and your players always seem to make the right decision at the right time. Well, and again, Steve, as you know, you coached before, when you have a veteran group back, they're able to put teams away. And that's absolutely right. I mean, we were, <laughs> there was many games where it was a one possession with minute 30 left. And, you know, I thought we controlled the tempo. I thought we, we played really good possession basketball, specifically down the stretch. And, it, you know, it paid off for us. I mean, so the game that I, I, that, that I really remember is the Las Cruces game, double overtime game. You just don't win those games. There was three momentum switches that were not in our favor. And uh, I just thought our kids just grinded it out and got that win. And, you know, there were several others, Valley at, at Valley. You know, we were, we, were, we were down by 12 in the fourth quarter of the Valley at home the second time around, and we came back to beat them. And then we, uh, we were up by one. Uh, there was a controversial play at the first game of the district, but... And then Albuquerque High was one possession game down the stretch. But you're absolutely right. If it was close, our team pulled it off. And, and, and what was unique about it, it was other people stepped up. It wasn't one player every game. That, you know, you, you had, I mean, it was, you always had somebody step up to, to you know, either a defensive stop or, if, you know, if, if it was an offensive board or, I mean, it was multiple people. And, and, and that was probably the strength of your team. And then even in talking with you, they all – Played with a lot of confidence. Your first seven guys played with a lot of confidence. I mean, they just seemed, and they had a lot of great chemistry. And, and they did, Steve. And the thing about that, that's, as you know, it's that, that's that's something that's really hard to produce, and that takes a lot of as a coach stepping backwards and letting them make mistakes and and giving them the green light and trusting them. And I thought that they, my team specifically, knew that I trusted them in certain situations, and they were able to close things out. You know, their shot, shot selections was phenomenal. They shared the ball. I mean, we had inside-outside play. You know, Jordan was a phenomenal passer. You know, you have Diego, Enrique, and you have um, Josiah, who, if they're open, they're going to knock that shot down. But they just make the extra pass. And like I said, I thought their shot selection was just magnificent. Well, we're going to go to the Dream Style Top 10 Plays of the, of the Week, and then we'll come back and pick up district play. and the delivery. This slider swung on and missed. Going in to make the snap and keep the tire at first. And this one from Man is deep to right. This one, the wind is pushing it back deep and it's gone. A 2-1 shot for Jared Mang. It looked like a routine pop fly. And the wind just said, no, 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 no. This one's going and gone. So Jared Mang, a 2-1 shot for the Lobos, makes it 16-9 here in the bottom of the eighth. The lead runner now offers. 1-2 curveball, outside corner, calls. There's a 1-2. That's well hit to left center. Does it have the distance? Yes, it does! Right back where it came from. Garley's going to be able to go to home for one and to first for two. A double play. Now the outside corner. It's a fastball and it's lined up the middle. Coming hard to it is Merritt. He dies and makes a difficult catch on the back end. And 
Banks gonna put this out to deep left. This one back at the wall, and that's gone. So a ball to right field into the wind it's got a chance Smith at the track he's at the wall and there it goes Goldsmith opposite field three run home run nothing completes a trip downtown like a visit to Lindy's Cafe You won't find a more relaxing restaurant to unwind at. Located on 5th and Central, proud supporters of ProView Networks, Lindy strives to be a friendly and welcoming place. Lindy's, a great place to be seen. Hey, welcome back to Steve Davis Show. We got Adrian Taylor, the 2018 6A state champion. I put that 6A in there. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a little more emphasis. In right. I, I'm, I'm getting energy with, with talking with you, but, uh, you know, going into district, you know, probably the team, you know, uh, if you go back in uh, Valley, Albuquerque High, West Mesa, all of a sudden, you know, the, you know, the state's looking at that district as, you know, one of the top districts in the state. I mean, that's something that's, Great coaches in your district, uh, you know, great home court advantages, and, and and you know I always you know thinking about what I'm talking about with you know Scott Gladdy and on the sports desk is you know basically if I was coaching in this district that you know I just want to win at home and split on the road basically you know for the year and and, and usually with that you're going to be right in the mix of mix of things and and boy you had some close ones but what a, what an unbelievable run. Yeah, we didn't we didn't lose a regular season game in district, but there was some close ones. And you know, the thing that we're going to miss because they did break up our district is those crowds. I mean, you were there, Steve. I mean, those, those com our communities, Valley's community, West Mesa's community, Albuquerque I community, they're just basketball junkies, and um, it's just amazing how how they supported every one of our teams. And they were real, it was really fun basketball to watch. Well, I don't know about coaching, but watching and and, and going because you could almost. You know, I, I, you could almost say that the game was going to go down to the last two or three minutes, and and, and that was always fun for a, you know, if you're trying to stay down the middle and not take sides, it's yeah. you just, I just wanted to see who would make the play or make the coaching move or or make the mistake or whatever, just to see how the game came down. But you, you guys stepped up all through district. Well, one of the biggest things that we did is is we didn't we didn't lose the rebound count in any one of those games. And I believe our turnovers were below 10 when we got to district. So we were, we were really peaking at that time. And we, we uh, like you said, we played really good. I uh, thought it was less offense. than that. I, was, I, I mean, the games we did, we were, we were four to six almost. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we did like four games. So you must have had some games that, we were, we were the, the, but it, I thought you were like in the five and six part as far as turnovers. Yeah, and our kids, mm -hmm. they, did, they took care of the ball. Like I said, just, you know, those things that hurt teams down the stretch, I thought we just, we just played flawless basketball. And like I said, the, the biggest thing was our kids just were unselfish. Any given night, I mean, it was just somebody else. I mean, we had five kids that made all district. I don't know if that's ever happened in our district, but that's pretty impressive to get five kids. And, and you know, the coaches vote on that. I, I can't vote on my own players. But to get five kids on that team, you know, it, it, it's a lot of respect for our team. Well, and it could have been easily six. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it. I mean, I mean, it was like you had, it was like six players all year round that, uh, that they came through. I mean, and, uh, uh, but uh, to go on that streak, but then you go into, you know, district championship. Valley comes into your, you know, your your place. It seemed like, uh, you know, your momentum's going your way and everything. And, and then all of a sudden, maybe maybe you know, it just happened that Valley comes in and gets an upset on your home court. Really stunned a lot of people in in the basketball world. Well, and they did it convincingly. And the thing that's hard about that game, Steve, is so you play a f the Friday prior. So you essentially have to wait eight days. Because we're sitting there waiting for everybody to play it out, and, and you know we 
we gave the kids off a couple days and just trying to keep them focused. But that's that's actually a really hard game to play. Not making excuses. Mm -hmm. Then we had our six man Angel Ramirez. He actually rolled his ankle the Monday in practice. He didn't play in that game, nor did he play in the Santa Fe game. And obviously, if you saw the finals, he he was really instrumental defensively in helping us pull that out against Cleveland. So not to make any excuses, you know, the freshman for Valley went off on us. Anthony's a phenomenal player, and you know, Coleman's going to have his team ready. So, you know, those losses that we had three losses. If you look at each one, they just they kind of just redirected us and refocused us. So it was kind of like a blessing again to lose that game to come back because we played Valley back to back after, or after Santa Fe in the pit, and we, we were able to beat them convincingly when it counted. So. Well, back to the Valley, you know, that week, and you, it, it, they got on a roll. I mean, mm -hmm. even, they were playing their best basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, that, that week was their best basketball of all their players and their role players. Everybody came in and contributed, and, and they were just hot. And we always talk about the team that gets hot uh, mm -hmm. right at the end is who can win those last four games in a row is, is, is the team that is going to win the state championship. And it kind of looked like – you know, Valley was getting some momentum. It looked like El Dorado was getting momentum, and and then then you play Santa Fe, which is a tough team. Santa mm -hmm. Fe is, you know, it was it was played in a tough district with El Dorado and, and La Cueva and, and Manzano, and uh, they came in and, and gave you everything you needed. You know, that was a grinder. Um, that was a, that was a tough matchup, and you, and you know, Steve, when you're when you're favored, it's always hard to. You know, keep your kids focused, keep them playing at the level that, that they've been playing. And uh, I, I thought that we kind of underestimated Santa Fe going in, specifically as the game went on. Our kids just were kind of like. You just didn't put them away. And they just didn't kinda, put them away. Yeah, 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 you could just see it. You could just see it. You could just see it. And I, I believe the last few uh, state champions were underdogs. You know, so being such a high seed to be able to close it out is just, it, again, it goes back to the mental toughness that our kids have. We lost, we won by three, we beat Santa Fe, but you know, once we walked down that ramp, it was almost like we were, we were back at home. We put Valley out pretty convincingly. Well, you, you get to the pit and, and uh, you know, it's, isn't that nice feeling? I mean, I mean, what, what, you, you get, you know, come off a Santa Fe game, you get to go play in the pit and, and your, your thoughts going into, and I, we have some highlights of mm -hmm. some of these games coming up. If, if, if Josh will kind of put them on the, put them on the board for us there. But uh, what, uh, you know, what games? I mean, you got, this, 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 we always jumped. We jumped right into the, the state championship and, and uh, you, you had a hard fight to get to the state championship. Yeah, you know, well, I, I thought that Joe Coleman said it best. I, I spoke to him after, and he felt like when, when they walked down the ramp and he saw our team warming up, he just kind of felt like our team was really focused mentally. And I, I felt the same way. It's, it's kind of like when you have a young team, you're just happy to be there. This veteran team, they weren't just happy being in the pit. They, were, you know, they, they understood that our goal was to win state and nothing, nothing less. Well, uh, there was a lot of teams this year that in the same, you know, El Dorado, I mean, the, the, you know, they had a lot of senior teams and also Las Cruces, the team that you know, had redemption on their, on their jersey. That they, they came in and lost last year in the state championship and, and, uh, and you, you know, you, you beat them in a, in a one of the, probably from a, from a spectators game and w watching it from a, the coaches and the, and the strategy of both coaches and, and just trying to grind it out to the end and make the right plays and see who would make the mistake. And you guys came out victors. Well, I kind of felt with the Las Cruces game specifically, being at Oñate and being in that district, you know, Coach Benjamin and, and Coach Smith were, did a phenomenal job in Las Cruces. Coach Smith goes to Hobbs, he just recently retires, but Benjamin runs the same stuff, it's the same program. And I kind of felt like I knew what they were gonna do. You know, Benjamin's philosophy is he's not going to change anything. He's going to go with what he has. And, and it's a good philosophy. Sometimes you over you change too much stuff and you're not a very good team. But I thought that we, we did a really good job against his flex. I thought that he got us a little bit with his pressure. But uh, I thought that. Right down uh, at the end, I, he, 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 put, he yeah. put some pressure on. Yeah. I thought exactly what you said. There's two coaches just going at it, a lot of strategy involved. And, you know, the biggest thing for us was just keeping our kids being positive and keeping them in the game and letting them know that they're going to, you know, we're proud of them and, and just go get it. This is yours type of thing. So our kids did it and we were just really proud of their, their performance. Well, then, you know, we kind of jumped the gun on that championship, but we, that was probably 
you know, that was, kind of, I mean, Cleveland came out, I mean, you, you took it to Cleveland, man, and then and, and, and they just kind of worked. It seemed like everything was going your way in that first half. I mean, everything, and then all of a sudden they got on a little bit of a run right before the end of the half and, and, and in that third quarter, and, and then then yeah. your senior leadership and, and players, <laughs> you have some career games from some guys that stepped up big time for you. Well, we uh, we held them to four points in the first quarter, and, and obviously everybody was talking about it. You know, if the game was going to be in the 70s and 80s, I kind of felt like it was going to be Cleveland's game. If we could maintain it and keep it in the, in the 50s, I thought we had a really good chance. So after that first quarter, keeping them to four, I felt really confident up until Jordan picked up his second foul in the second quarter. We, we actually went to Marquise Crawford, who did a really good job. He actually was a floater. He played, he played JV and he played varsity. And he found himself in the biggest game of, of his career. But yeah, you know, Mon and Muhammad are just in their back. Those, those kids are just so athletic and they're so good and uh, they're fast. And like I said, they did go on a run. But uh, I thought in the fourth quarter, I don't know if you remember the exact play, but there was a play where um, we were down and Josiah actually got a steal. Josiah Ramos pushed the ball up. We made an extra pass, hit a three, and then we took the lead. And then we just, like you said, once we had the lead back then, we just weren't going to lose that one. Well, we're going to come back and talk more about your state championship win and also the future of Atrisco Heritage. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfriedatabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Proby Sports Network. Well, I'm going to the Frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, warm scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swords Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swords Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swords Team Sales. Hey, welcome back to the Steve Davis Show. We've got... Adrian Tega, head coach of the Trisco Heritage, 2018 6A state championships, and, and what a great, great, just hearing that and having that blue trophy and all the work and sweat that you, your players, and your administration, I mean, and your whole community. I mean, it, it, one thing about Trisco Heritage, you and, and have done an unbelievable job of getting the community involved. And that's been huge see it's been instrumental if you if you look at on all sports isn't what, i'm just saying yeah, on, yeah, it's, it's just well, not basketball yeah. and then, but i mean you look at the crowd that came into the game mm -hmm. and the support you got there a new school and yeah and if you look at you know the valleys albuquerque highs the eldorados the la cuevas they've they've established that over you know 20 years of of competing in the varsity level we to get our community out you know competing at the varsity level for such a limited time it's been it's been really amazing the the school pride that this has brought to us. You know our school principal, Irene Cisneros, shut the school down that Monday after we won state, which I I felt was just phenomenal. You know every kid on our campus was truly excited about what we did. Every kid, whether it's a band kid, whether it's just a regular kid that doesn't play any sports, there was truly a a, a really electric atmosphere at our school that this brought. But that comes from your leadership of, of, of being an athletic. You embrace all students, and, you know, on our student athletes and also all students. And, and I, that's from a guy looking outside in. Okay, and I, you know, and I, that's one. That's why your program's so great. All, all your programs, all your coaching, all the people you have is just, it's, it's for, 
being a, a new school, it's getting old now, it's getting older, <laughs> but it, it, for being a new school is, 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 is you've done an unbelievable, and it's just not you, I mean, the, the people you've hired, and also, like you said, the administration has hired you, uh, you guys work very hard together. Well, and we, we, you know, I'm the athletic director there as well, and we promote multiple sport athletes. I know a lot of coaches say that, but in reality, they don't. You know, we, we have kids that are playing multiple sports on our squads, and, and, you know, Coach Johnson, you know, Coach Trujillo, Coach Martinez, they, you know, they're really receptive to that, and that's something that's, that young coaches don't like doing. But my philosophy has always been, if you, if you have a state champion, for example, we had four football kids that are coming back, you have a state champion that's going to be on that football field. They're going to take that experience from basketball, and hopefully it's going to rub off on some of the kids in football, whether it's, you know, kids not going hard in practice. They're going to, hey, you want this? This is how hard you got to practice. And, you know, that's something that I learned from Kevin Barker over at Sandia High School. Um, he always said that, you know, when you have a successful season in football and you take those kids over to basketball, it kind of rubs off. And same thing to baseball and some of our other sports. So, you know, our, our coaches have bought in a sharing, which I'm, I'm really excited about. Well, and, and, it, and it goes to, like, you know, on the girls' side, I mean, competitive. Everybody, everybody's competitive, but they're also, they're very respectful for, uh, for their, their, their athletes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, our girls are, are the same way. It's not just the boys' school, the program. It's the girls' program. And, and uh, you know, I've been very fortunate as the athletic director. Our, our coaches are, are phenomenal. You know, they don't, they don't recruit. They don't cheat. They do things the right way. They build with their kids, which I think is really, really important. You know, the thing about our basketball team, every kid in our program started with us, which is really important to me, specifically our varsity kids. We had five seniors. They started with us. Our juniors started with us. We don't, we don't have any kid from another school. You know, we, we've had some kids that have left, but, you know, I, I, our program is hard, Steve. I mean, our standards are, are high, and, and we, we know academically, character-wise. And, you know, at the end of the day, when they reach a senior year and, and they're in our program, I, I, I truly believe that they were molded to be really competitive and to be good, good students. I'll give you an example. Um, our three seniors, Jordan, Diego, and Jason. Jason Weisgerber is 4.0, CUME GPA. Jordan Arroyo, who got the Presidential Scholarship at UNM, is a 4.4, and Diego's a 4.6 GPA. And then we had our other two seniors, Enrique was a 3.2, and Angel was a 3.1, who's going to play college football in Oklahoma at a small Division II school. So all, that thing, all those things translate to success, Steve, in my mind. I think there's a direct correlation between the academic piece, you know, the competitive piece. I think they all just work together. I mean, you, you don't get something for nothing. Well, you know, well, you, you can't. I know you don't rest on your accolades, and I know you got the blue trophy just, you know, in March, and and uh, you know that's great honor. But now, hey, your district's changing. What's what's what what are we what are you doing now to to keep your team focused to to repeat? Well, it's been it's been a roller coaster ride. You know, the the APS board recognized us. Um, a few weeks ago, the city council, Miss Pena, I was honored to have our team over at the city council meeting last week. And tonight, um, we're going to be honored at the county commission meeting. So we're still riding this roller coaster way. But to, to answer your question, you know, we're getting after an athletics class. We're playing hard. We're lifting. We're shooting. We got a lot of young kids back. We'll have we'll have three seniors in our program. The rest are sophomores who got some time this year. So. We're, we'll be ready for summer basketball. We're going to do four camps. We're looking at doing a couple of out of state, possibly. Uh, right now, I'm looking at San Diego State, which was really good for us last year. We went to USD, which I thought helped us the competitive level that we played against. Um, you know, those kids need to see what's out there. And, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, summer is always fun. It's really fun because you just coach. You just coach one game after the other. Well, I tell you, you know, I want to thank you for coming on my show, and and, and also congratulations, 2018 state champions, 6A, and and uh, and what a remarkable, unbelievable job you have done, not this year, but through your whole career. Well, I appreciate that, Steve, and and you know, we've been knocking at the door for a while. We've been to a couple semifinal games. We've been to a finals four years ago, and we lost to Valley. So. I'm just glad our kids got to experience it. And, and I'm glad, you know, for what you guys do for high school basketball. I, I remember, you know, when I was at Sandia, this, I don't even know if this was a dream or not, but to have this type of access to our high school kids and, and the publicity that you give them, uh, they, they certainly appreciate it. I mean, those guys are all over the top 10 plays. They talk about it. They're excited about it. You know, they go back on Provia and look at the state finals game. Our parents, 
So we appreciate what you guys do, and, and, and I really appreciate you having me on the show, Steve. Well, I tell you what, let's let's have a repeat and let's, let's, let's do it again. Let's just enjoy no, this no, one. No, 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 no pressure. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Adrian, for coming on.